Right, today what I wanted to talk to you about is the marvellous, what I think is marvellous, Coronado PST. And the reason I say marvellous is because it's a marvel how they came up with it in the first place. So it's got this specialised interference filter called an etalon inside it, this 30mm etalon inside. And what that does, it isolates such a small region of the wavelength of light in hydrogen from the sun, the, the red wavelength and it allows you to tune within that using this nailed ring. So you can see prominences leaping off the surface of the sun. This wasn't something you could see before this came along. Prominences and the same thing on the face of the sun, filaments, which are basically prominences, but they're on the surface of the sun that you can see. And light active regions called plague and granulation. Yeah, just really much more dynamic view than you could see before. Now this was introduced in about 1997 and um, I think me took over in the early 2000s. At least 10 years ago I got hold on these for the first time and I was blown away what you could see from your back garden. It's not the best solar telescope you can get. You can spend thousands and get really incredibly impressive either Coronado or Lunt solar telescopes. But as an entry point for about, I mean, the, when these were released back in the day, they were like five hundred dollars, five hundred pounds, five hundred euros, that kind of region. And now they're still about eight hundred. And even if you buy the double stack for it, an extra filter you can put on the front, which takes that one angstrom wide band pass, which, by the way, is the width of an atom bandwidth. It takes that down to 0.5 angstrom, so you can see even f more rich contrast on the disc of the sun. Not so much about the prominences, but with the double stack, it gives you much more of a rich view of the surface of the sun on the disc itself. So you could screw, you could just buy this and then save up for the, the double stack and then screw it on when you want to look at more of the surface details and then undo it when you want to have a look more of the prominences. And then you're tuning to that bandwidth with this tuner here because the light coming off the sun's going in all different directions. It's red shifting, blue shifting, and this allows you to sort of shift the bandwidth to tune for that. And then there's a blocking filter, five mil blocking filter down the eyepiece to reduce the amount of light. And you can focus with that little doodah at the bottom there. And it's got a sol finder there, little peepholes letting in the light at the front to the soul finder so it's easy to position it find the sun you can pop this on a photographic tripod it's got the quarter inch 20 threads there for a photographic tripod and you could pop a vixen dovetail on there a photo dovetail pop it onto a tracking mount track the sun which is better for imaging and viewing it's keeping the view in the eyepiece. This comes with a 18mm plus all by the way. So this is a 400mm focal length telescope, 40mm aperture, so focal ratio of 10. So if you want to work out the magnification of an eyepiece, you just divide the 400 by the number on the side of your eyepiece. In this case it's 18, so it's 20 odd. I can't do the maths off the top of my head. I'll put the number up, uh, what this actually gives out the box of the included eyepiece. So, but enough to see, you look, you look at the view through here and you can easily see the full disc of the sun with room all around it to spare. You could probably pump it up to a 15 mil, 12 mil, still get a full disc view. But there is a sweet spot that, you, that going beyond which the, the contrast does fall off. Now the good thing about viewing with your eye is your eye's got really great contrast. So you can see the surface features and the prominence is leaping off all at the same time. Now, two problems with using cameras with this. The first one is that the, the focal point's slightly above the IP solder. It's like five or 10 mil above the IP solder. So those ZWO mini cams or similar mini cams that kind of look like an eyepiece, where the sensor's quite far forward and sits all the way in, they reach focus no problem. But the wider body cameras, the ones with the sensors further back, some, you're either going to need a Barlow lens to reach focus or some cameras such as my ZWO 462 and things like the 662 
they uh, are compatible with an adapter. The front face of that camera screws off and you can put on an adapter which makes it low profile and brings that sensor further in to reach focus. And that's what I've used to take some video, which I'll show you in a moment. But the, the second negative about that is that the camera's not got as good dynamic range as our eyes. So when you're filming the, the sun through this or another solar telescope, either after exposed for the disk of the sun or the prominences leaping off the sun, you can't expose for both of them at the same time. So in the video footage, I do overexpose the, the sun so you can see the prominences leaping off, but I can't show you both at once, but you can if you're if you've got this on a tracking mount and you've got a large enough sensor to get a full disk view or just keep it on a region of the sun, then you can stack those images and get more detail that way and you can process them. But I'm just simply showing you a movie that I captured, but bear in mind, it's not as good as looking through this eyepiece, which is freaking amazing. Um, even though this is a very affordable solar telescope and there are better ones out there, which just makes me think what the good ones are like, because I've only ever looked through a PST or the very similar Lunt 40. Now, the word Lunt is very closely linked to Coronado because the guy who invented the Coronado PST, well, there's a guy called David Lunt and someone called Geraldine Hogan, I think it was. Um, but Lunt, I believe, the company Lunt is run by David Lunt's son. So there's definitely a family link between the two big companies in hydrogen alpha telescopes, which are uh, Mead Coronado and Lunt. So that's an interesting link that I found out about recently and I thought I'd share with you guys. But this is, you know, this is quite an old, this is the one that started it all off. Hydrogen alpha viewing of the sun in your back garden. Let's have a look at some example video. Just want to say thank you very much to my channel members and my patrons as always thank you for your support and move shoot move have kindly got in touch and they've sent me a, a tri adapter smartphone adapter which i'll try with this uh, shortly as well as my telescopes and maybe a pair of binoculars and we'll put that through its paces so that'll be probably the next video so if you want to catch that one you know what to do cool